Well, hey, welcome back to Wednesday Wisdom. Uh, I'm Jack. I'm the creative director here at Seacoast. Um, when, uh, when Adam, Martin, and I were talking about uh, renaming this and changing things up a little bit, I uh, kind of wondered whether we needed to put wisdom in quotation marks. Um, I hope I'm not overselling what, what you know, we bring to the table, but certainly hope that what we're able to talk about here and what we share is helpful for you. Um, and uh, if it is, let us know in the comments below. If it's not, ah, you don't need to let us know that. Um, so here's what I want to talk about today. I was thinking about it, and, and I kind of knew a topic I had, but I also knew that, um, well, uh, the topic I have uh, can generate some feelings and discussion, and, and here's uh, the question I have. If I asked you to define theology, what would you say? If I asked you to define theology, what would you say? Uh, how would you feel uh, about studying theology? Um, I think that uh, we all can have different feelings about this. Um, and I've uh, had conversations with a lot of people over the years in terms of those who would say that studying theology is so important and those who say studying theology, they don't really see the point. Um, I hear, uh, and I talk to a lot of people who say, I, I don't understand, it's not practical. Um, I think it's kind of a waste of time to study theology. Um, and I think a lot of that is understandable. I think that when we talk about theology, I think what it evokes for a lot of people are, um, you know, fights or arguments or long, um, you know, super heavy books written by, uh, you know, dead guys. Um, and uh, in this idea is theology is something for academics or for people looking for an argument. It's not really for me, and it's not really for my everyday life. And I understand that. I do. I think, though, it's based on a misunderstanding. See, my view is that theology is not an academic exercise. It's actually the most practical thing imaginable when it comes to your faith and how you live it out. Um, my view is that theology is really no different from getting to know your spouse or getting to know a friend or learning about uh, who your kids are, right, and how they're wired up and making those little discoveries. Um, and here's what I mean. Uh, let me define theology, maybe the broader term, this way. I'm going to give kind of a little bit more of an academic definition, maybe, but then I want to break that down a little bit. Um, so one way of defining theology might be the study of who God is based on what and how he's revealed himself to us, and we do this through studying the Bible. Let me say that again. Um, one way of defining theology is as the study of who God is based on what and how he has revealed himself to us. And we do this through studying the Bible. Okay, now, for those of you who are still awake, let me talk a little bit about that. Because you might think, right, exactly. How does that have anything to do with my life and my day-to-day? -day? All right, here's why this is so practical. Because everything you say and do and think reflects what you believe about God. Everything you say, do, and think reflect something you believe about God, even if you don't realize that's what's happening. Um, when, uh, when you, uh, you know, get an unexpected bill and it makes you panic and you can't deal with that anxiety, that might reflect something about what you believe about God's capacity to provide for you, right? As one example. Um, and second, the second reason that theology is super practical, it's not just because it really touches every part of our life, what we say, do, and think, uh, but also because how can we say that we love God if we don't want to get to know him? If we say that we love God, how can we say that if we don't want to get to know him better? Um, if you asked me uh, some questions about my wife, right? Like, hey, what's her favorite food, her favorite color? Uh, what does she enjoy doing for fun? Uh, what's she reading right now? And I couldn't answer any of those questions. I probably couldn't answer what she's reading right now because she just reads a ton. Um, and so I'd probably be three books behind what she's actually reading right now. But if I couldn't answer any questions about my wife, you would start to have questions about me and how much I actually care about my wife. Um, when we love someone, we want to get to know them, right? We want to get to know them better. Uh, when you are obsessed with someone, right, because you love them, 
you want to know everything about them. You want to know what they like, what they don't like. Um, you want to know what makes them happy, excited. You want to know what makes them sad so you can avoid doing those things. Uh, you want to know how to cheer them up. Uh, you want to know those things and you're learning more about them reflects your love for them. And learning more about God, which is just another way of saying theology, learning more about God reflects our desire to know him because we believe that God is someone that we can have an actual relationship with. And so theology is just this idea that we already all live out anyway, which is when we love someone, we get to know them better. And so today, I kind of want to focus, and I kind of want to break this up into two things. I want to focus on the things we say and the things we do. And so next week, I'm going to talk about the things we do. Today, I want to focus on the things we say about God and why that matters. Um, I know that theology, again, conjures up images of arguments and you know, late night dorm room fights and all that stuff. Um, and it does for me too, in fact. Um, I spent a lot of time in college arguing theology and it made me feel smart and feel like I knew things. Uh, the problem was I wasn't as smart as I thought I was and I didn't know anything. Um, but I understand that. But what we say about God does matter. And here's why. Take a moment and uh, imagine the person who means more to you than anyone else in the world. If you can't pick one person, pick a few people. But think of someone that just means the world to you. And now I want you to imagine that you're talking with a group of people and this person comes up in conversation. And what is said about this person isn't true. In fact, it's borderline scandalous. And you know that these are lies. Would you correct them? Well, yeah, of course you would. Of course you would. If you hear someone lying about someone you love, you jump in and you say, hey, that is not true. That is not the person I know. Of course you do. Why? Because it matters to you what people say when they talk about someone you love. When people talk about someone we love, we care very much what comes out of their mouth. It's the same thing with God. If our love for God is reflected in our desire to get to know him better, it should also be reflected in how much we care about what we say about him. Are we careless when we describe God to other people? Well, no, I think we want to be sure that we're saying things that we think are true about God. And that's actually, I think, a really good definition or a way of looking at a part of what theology is. Theology is saying true things about God, right? Theology is saying true things about God. And you can't know that you're saying true things about God unless you want to get to know him better. And you can't get to know him better unless you take the time to do it and work at it. That's just all theology is. It's getting to know God better, saying true things about him. I think that's a really good way of understanding why theology matters and why actually even those of us who would say, I think studying theology is no practical value. Actually, you practice theology every day because every day you are uh, expressing things that you believe about God. I want to read Romans 10, 13 through 17. Um, it says, for everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Um, the only way people meet God is by hearing about him, right? There are a few that maybe have a very special personal encounter with, uh, with God directly, like what, what, uh, what Saul had on the road to Damascus. But the vast majority of us, we came to, uh, we came to know God, to have a relationship with him because of people we knew or because of people that we listen to talking about God. The only way that other people can have an accurate understanding of Christ, of the gospel, right, of who God is, is based on what we are saying to them. And how can they really know him if the things we're saying don't match reality? 
And that's why we should care very much what we say about God. And we should care very much about getting to know him better so that what we say is true. So I want to ask a few questions as we wrap up today. Some questions for you, whether you're uh, watching this alone and just want to think about it for a little bit, that would be me. Um, Or whether you're in a group of friends and you want to discuss amongst yourselves uh, kind of what we've talked about, that would not be me. Um, Have some questions for us to consider. Uh, Are you taking the time to get to know God? Does your relationship with him actually look like a relationship? Are you taking the time to get to know God? How are you doing that? Are you spending time in conversation with him through prayer? Are you spending time reading the Bible? Because that's kind of the, uh, a lot of what he wanted to show us about himself. It's found in the Bible. Are you taking time to read the Bible and learn about him? Are you spending time in conversation with him? How are you getting to know God better? Are you paying attention to what you say when you talk about God? How do some of the things you've said this week reflect on what you believe about God? What if some of those things revealed, do you think, um, about your beliefs, about God, and your understanding of who he is? Um, are you seeking out people who know God better than you do so they can help you find any blind spots? Uh, one of the things that is so necessary is we all need people who have permission to look us in the eye and say, nope, you are wrong. We all need that. And we need that when it comes to God too, because none of us understand God as well as we could. And we need people in our lives who can help us find those blind spots and say, hey, uh, this thing that you are saying, I don't think that accurately reflects who God is. Are you seeking out people who can help you understand God better? Um, Finally, what do you need to say to God that maybe you haven't said in a while? You know, prayer is a, is a two-way street. It is a conversation, and a conversation means a dialogue. It's not a monologue. Um, what do you need to say to God about himself, about you? What do you need to tell God today that maybe you haven't told him in a while? So that's what I have today. I want to talk about theology a little bit. I'm going to finish up next week um, with the things that we do. But theology does matter. And whether you know it or not, you practice it every day. Because every day you're getting to know God better, I hope. And every day, the things you think and say and do reflect that level of understanding that you have about God. So I hope, let's think on these things this week and think about some of the questions I asked and how we can really try hard to get to know God better so that the things we say can lead other people to know him better and maybe for the first time. Would you pray with me? Uh, Father, uh, I ask that you would really uh, make the, the relational aspect of our faith real to us this week in a new way. Uh, we believe that we can know you personally as a friend, um, as a father, as a brother. We believe uh, that you have revealed yourself to us and that you want to speak with us and that you want us to know you better. Make that more real to us this week. Help us to seek you out. Uh, Bring people into our lives who can show us where our blind spots are, who can help us see the things uh, that we aren't seeing right now. I ask that you would guide us. I ask that you would um, help us pay attention to the things we say and consider how they reflect what we believe about you uh, so that everything we say can be for your glory and can uh, accurately convey uh, who you are to a world that needs you. Ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.